tour of the Lake District is a 96 mile circuit starting and finishing in the popular tourist town of Ambleside. The trail takes in each of the main Lake District valleys, along lake shores, through woodland and over remote mountain passes. Join me as I take on this winter Lakeland adventure with a mix of freezing wild camps and cosy country pubs. Welcome to another video and I'm out in the Lake District. We're doing a multi-day hike, but it's in winter so I don't know, you know, it's all a lot of different kit and I've done a full review of what I've took with me. I don't know whether that's whether you've already seen that or not. I've had to have a serious think about footwear and which sleeping bag to take and, and what tent, everything like that, because it is, it is winter and there'll be some of the hikes are on top of the mountain, so it could get a bit gruelling. I don't really have a plan. I'm just making it up as I go as far as like where I'm going to stay and stuff. I'm, I'm all kitted out. I've got all my food and water and everything that I need so that I don't have to stay anywhere if I, you know, if I don't feel like it, I can just wild camp and I've got enough food to last me all in my kit. But it's going to be exciting, man, so stay tuned. I need this one for my bulb. I just needed some adventure and I thought, you know what, I'm not going to wait until the weather gets better. I'm just going to go and do it. I forgot my titanium cup, so I've had to nip into Ambleside. I'm looking forward to it. They say in the guidebook that it takes about nine days to complete, but I've got stuff to do and places to be, so... I'm on, I've given myself five days to do it, so I'll have to maximise the daylight because I'm only getting sort of eight hours daylight, so I'm just going to have to really head down and, and crunch some miles out and and uh, just do it that way. It's exciting though. I've got the proper guidebook and that, so I can show you some map time. Let's get out of Ambleside and get into the sticks. It's a steep one out of Ambleside. My Ultra 5s, my yellow ones, their grip had gone. And I thought, if it's going to be bad weather and I'm up in the mountains, I need some grip. So these are the 7s, which I shall do a full review after this hike because I think if I put 100 mile in on them, I can compare them to the 5s and, and give you my opinion. But so far, so good. They look a bit garish though, don't they? Look at that, like some sort of 80s shell suit or something, innit? Whatever. Robin, look at Robin. You're leading the way, mate. We're gonna have a safe journey. As is the case with these trips, I often come out of the traps like an excited whippet and do too much in, <laughs> in first day. Day one's always like, hey, we're doing it. And then day two, like that, chafing, hurting. <sighs> Gonna keep it measured and keep it level. Because as with all these long distance hikes, there is a, a meaning or a, a, a message or a lesson, a lesson that I'm looking to get taught here. Because I've been through Ringer a little bit with Noodle and this is, <laughs> symbol I could cry mate honestly this symbolizes coming out at the other end and I want this hardship I want it to I want it, you know I want to achieve something and this is it it's a little goal and it means that I'm ah, it's just a it just means I'm out the other side it means a lot anyway but waffle waffle we'll get into it we'll talk a bit more about it all as we go because 100 mile mate you might want to stick with me you might not but <laughs> There'll be, there may be, this is part one. If I make it, I make it. I might not even make it. I might have chosen wrong footwear and that. Don't know where we're sleeping. Don't know what we're doing. And that's how I like it. This is a big moment, this. The first. And I'm glad it's just a simple one to ease me in, look. I don't care if these lads are watching. Stupendous. There's a few folk about, but that's because it's Sunday and it's a lovely day. Well, I mean, it's not raining and it's not windy, so it's a lovely day. And so there's a, there's a few folk on this trail. 
just day walkers but i'm expecting it to sort of drop off during the week and when we get up into the fells because i need some solitude that's what i'm gonna get just mint sheep that's it that's all i want me sheep and a few latches and locks he agrees look yes man Oh, he's put a little notch in there, look. Oh, thank you. Effortless. Good to be back. <laughs> there we go, that's the first one. First one of many. <laughs> Thing is, though, it's a tough gig when you like when there's people behind you and stuff and you're like, oh, but I want to get that shot. Yeah, I just got to do it, like... <laughs> there was a... <laughs> there was a... Uh, like, there's a bloke, there's a fella, there's a fella and a lady back there and... They just had to watch me just talk to a gate. Oh, this is a nice little bit, look. A pitch on there, that's flat as a pancake. Here's Joey D, look. Coming bouncing uphill. Come to see me. Joey D. Are you ready? Get this. There we go, mate. That's it. Now then, mate, you're right. The weather is stunning. It's perfect. Perfect hiking conditions. Not too hot. Nah, it's just it's perfect. It's forecast to be not so perfect tomorrow. So, the mixed bag. I'm ready for it. Just don't listen to mountain weather forecast. Because it's cack. And it keeps doing me in. It's done me in multiple times. I re it's just cack, mate. What I normally do is look for nearest village or town or whatever to where you're going into mountains. And just use Met Office or BBC Weather, something like that, for that. And uh, and then it's oftentimes it's same up in fells, you know, it's just maybe a little bit colder. Because we're in Lake District, aren't we? It's not like we're up massive mountains. It's just it fell, so oftentimes, whatever the weather is for like down there, it is same up here, just maybe a little bit colder. It works for me anyway. Do as I, do as I, do as I, not as I, do as I. Lovely views of Windermere in the distance there. Don't you worry about it. Oh, I like that. Oh, yes. I do like that, look at that. Springlet. Oh, failed at final hurdle, look. I'm, I'm not, shoulder work. I shouldn't have to do it, lads. But, that is bittersweet because look at that. Powerful old spring and a botched job all welded together like that, look. Lovely bit of kit, but then, falls at final hurdle, I'm afraid. There's a bit of a glare on front, it's hard to do this, but I wonder if I can. I'll get it so it's looking like where I'm coming. So I'm coming down here, you don't want to get keep going on that path. You've got to take quite a sharp right through here, which is through there. Oh, okay, this looks quite interesting. What have we got? It's clearly the same fella who was doing the other one. He's, he's some sort of a wizard, isn't he, look? Because look, got that triangle bit onto the chain. Absolute wizardry, can I? One foot it, yes. Hey, up, is he redeeming himself from before? Let's see. Let's see. Clunk click. Oh my god, good lad. And it's in old bit of stone as well. That's beautiful, that, isn't it? Look at that. Just going into. That is splendid, isn't it? Look. From this side. Should we go again? Oh. Oh, that's a pleasure. That's an absolute pleasure. Absolutely pleasurable. You know what, like, sometimes you go through these gates and it just blows your mind and you think, what can I do? And then you realise that you are the managing director of Latches and Locks Incorporated. So you whip out your phone and you pop this on Latch and Locks. And I've not posted anything on Latch and Locks for months because Noggin haven't been there, but what a return. Uh, I'll leave a link here. No, it's not a joke. Oh, 
of it there. That's it. Job's done. I'll have to go back. Just watch this. <laughs> Gazelle. Across a little stream to get to this one. Oh, it's one of these. I do like these. Look at that. Of course. Of course. You can't see me, but I'm saluting. What I'm loving is, uh, well there's lots that I'm loving, but I'm loving the fact that there's no signpost for this trek. It's not like a, a national trail or anything. And it's, I think it's pretty underused, if I'm honest. And there's no path in certain bits. There's no, you just like go through this field, head that way. And I love that. And long may it continue. I mean, you're risking it off-road, aren't you? It's just a little bit of a road section, not too much. But I don't mind it when it's nice and quiet like this. Look at this beauty. The old stone gatepost. There isn't one there, but you'd have just put timber in here, across, and you've got yourself a gate. Skill with falls. Fierce, mate. Absolutely brutal. That's a heart, that like. What's that on there? Oh, a bit of reinforcement, look. Good effort. Lovely views as well. Let's have a look at yet. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see the little side unit there, look. Little, uh, that was my fault, that was cute, that was my fault, that's good. I didn't see a little, little side piece. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at it. I could make just a, uh, I might just change my channel into just, actually just looking at gates and stuff in the, in the like, in the UK and all over the world. Who would like to see me in Tibet looking at gates? Trying to keep my feet dry. Because I've chosen option to wear trail runners and try and keep my feet as dry as I can for as long as I can, but I think it's in vain. It's gonna happen, isn't it? You're gonna get drenched. Here we go. Call these the squealers. Yeah, didn't let me down. It doesn't even reach, look. Come on, guys, what was, who's done that? Cause, oh wait, mate. That is a botched job, in it? Look, he's put actual thing too far that way. Look, didn't reach. Come on. Let's see what he's done at this side. If it's any better? I hope so. Otherwise, I might. If they're both knacked, I'm reporting it to uh, to government. <laughs> All right. How could you get that one right and then just miss it by so much on the other side? 10 to 5 on a Friday job, on it? Not good enough, mate. See you later. It's so peaceful, mate. Around all towns and villages, especially on a Sunday when it's nice weather, you do get a bit of an infestation with humans and a lot of day walkers and that. Which is fine, you know, I encourage it, but it's sometimes just like, oh, I just want peace and quiet, <laughs> and then you're like walking side by side with a, like a screaming kids and dogs and all that. Which you get when you get close to towns, but then when you get up in fells, and especially the good thing about multi-day hiking is 
it gets late on it day and everyone's just everyone does one so you're sort of left on your own which is just what I'm, <laughs> it's what I'm looking for so like normally I would do a foot like you know put a shift in put like over 20 mile but I can't I just don't have enough light so um, yeah so it's going to be a short day today I don't know how much how, what sort of distance I'll have done but I'll check all that in tent because I'm going to have I'll tell you what map time is going to be good this this uh, on this uh, series because I'm going to be in my tent from five o'clock onwards which is a long time isn't it good job I've got the guidebook and I can I've only plotted about a quarter of it into my GPS so that'll give me something to do because I quite enjoy that even though it's painstaking I do quite enjoy it because I'm a nerd go on, let's go And we're into woods. Look at that. Just a just a bent nail with a chain over it is sometimes all you need. Look at that. Property of the National Trust. Beatrix Potter. It's absolutely glorious, man. Uh, we've just been past an old, that old white cottage, which is a grade two listed building um, that I believe Beatrix Potter gave to the National Trust. More on that later when we do map time. All right, we've got uh, multiple choice questions. Let's have to get on map, map time. Should we do a live map time, will you? Let's have a goose. I'm there. Oh, should it go down? I think we're going down here. They're close together though, aren't they? Is it worth a risk? Nah, let's refer to the guidebook. This is it, mate. Belton Bridges, Ambleside to Connish Road. Bear right. That's this. That's this. Delightful. Oh, look at this. Come on, guys. Leaving it unlocked, look. I'll sort it, look. There you go. Oh, no. No. Not downhill, then back uphill. It's day one, though, isn't it? It's day one stuff. So I've briefly joined part of the Cumbria Way, which I can remember uh, from summer when I did it with Fern. Although the foliage was a lot different, it was a lot more green. I think I'm going to make it to Coniston, which that's not it's not a mega shift really, but considering the the daylight I've had, it's uh, not too bad. But Coniston's quite built up; it's a little town or village, or whatever. So, and I don't want to stay in a pub or a B and b or anything like that. I might do, near the end or halfway around as a little treat for myself. Uh, but not now, not now, I want to rough it. So, my choices and my options are, do I stop before I get into Coniston? I like look for somewhere. It's only half three, but because <laughs> at the time of year, in an hour, an hour and a half, it'll be dark. Five o'clock, we'll be getting there. So do you look for somewhere before Coniston, before you get into Coniston, or do I just gun it and get to the other side? We'll see, but let's try not get squashed first, eh? Come on, come on. Ugh. Try not get squashed, the waving at us, look. Uh, yeah. Sweet as. I think I'm gonna get to Coniston and then push on through. It's the only way, really. And, uh, and just keep going until it starts to get dark. Keep going, I've got my head torch. I mean, I'll talk through what I'm carrying this in my little chest pouch. But head, head torch is in there because it's winter and I'm gonna be setting off early in the morning and walking till, till it's too dark, so we'll see. So yeah, I've made my mind up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push on through Coniston and get out the other side of it and then look for somewhere to camp once it starts getting, getting dark.
look at this. I'm coming into Coniston just as the sun's setting over the hills. And the temptation, <laughs> it's Sunday, isn't it? Sunday. The temptation to get a, just like a Sunday lunch and a, or Sunday tea. <sighs> just have a couple of scoops. <laughs> it's very strong. It's a very strong urge to do that, but if I do that, then I'm definitely walking out into the sticks. It's dark, aren't I? To pitch up it dark. Just because of a couple of scoops. But then you can stay warm, can't you? Stay warm. Couple of scoops on till about... And a bit of food till about 7 or 8. And also, it's the start of a full moon today, so... It'll be light. <laughs> and then I'll just go front pub after a couple of gauges and then... Just keep on outside of town, just get away from my houses and that, and then pitch up in dark. Or do we bat on? Bat on. I think we bat on, I don't know. The next shot is going to be me in a pub, in it. Took it into a lasagna or something. A bit pie, or whatever. <laughs> right, that was a tough gig. I've just walked past four pubs. Four. To instead take on this. I mean, does it look steep on here? It doesn't look steep on here, but it's steep. Coming out of Coniston. You've got to do it, haven't you? I'll find somewhere to camp now. Look at this. Oh, it's a bit wet. It's dripping, in fact. Should we go have a look? I ain't got time for this. Doing it anyway, doing it anyway. Shit. Oh, I've got wet feet. Look at that. Hello? I wonder how far that goes. Oh, I've got wet feet. That's it. Oh. All day. I've managed to avoid getting wet feet. Uh, and then right at the bitter end. Double trouble. Careless, mate. Careless whispers. Right, no more. Sidetracked. At least you're not going to get sidetracked by that, though. Look at it. <laughs> it's nice. I conquered that hill. Pissed it, mate. Pissed it. And uh, chasing sunset. It's deal or no deal, but we like for camp spots in it when you're going like this because is that wobbling, Oliver? Oh, these make me. Uh, my little thing's broke. It's all get wobbly. Oh, if I could get some pine pitch, if I find some pine pitch, find some pine resin, I'll fix that. But anyway, sorry for wobbliness. So you, I'm trying to crunch out as, as many miles as I can, but then the sun is slowly going down over hill. And I'm like, well, that's a good place, and that's a good place. But then, do I want to get around corner? Is there a better place? Deal or no deal? No deal. No deal, no. I'm going to keep going. No, no, cheers. Sun's going in. And the temperature's dropped. Obviously, we're getting higher up as well, so that cools things down a bit. And the wind chill's coming in from this way, so... I'm going to try and either hug the side of this or find a just a natural hill or some rocks or whatever and get behind it and get a little bit of shelter. I got windy up there but I've just dropped down just behind here and look at this. <laughs> Absolute jackpot mate. Oh, it's boggy, so it's not quite jackpot, but it's jackpot enough. I think it's jackpot just enough. Maybe up here. A bit less boggy. Yes. Oh, here we go. That's my spot. Still a bit windy, but nothing like up there. And look at my vistas. Oh, it's windy a little bit though, isn't it? 
Oh well, we're well, just going to pitch here anyway because it's getting dark. Oh sweet home. The skies are doing something good aren't they? Ah. Ah. Right, one of these. There we go. Just a little, a few little fine adjustments, but you can't. Oh, look here, you fall off of me. Can't hack it. Too much hiking. Look at this, beautiful skies. I managed to get my tent up. We're here happy days, man. We're back. Back at Lanshan too. So, I pegged her out, and then, because it's winter, and I'm in lakes, I've brought four, four of these bad boys and I'm going to pop, pop them in in all four corners now and uh, and then we're going to move in. So yeah, I've got my delta pegs in the corners now. I just pegged it out with the other pegs provisionally and then the de delta pegs go in and then I've used my other pegs just doubling them up. So you've got your bit of cord on your, on your peg and then your secondary peg goes through that loop so it's belt and breeches so she's not going anywhere so if winds do pick up like winter winds I'm, I'm all good light is fading fast man you can see it better if i go this way around look that's that, that's how dark it is look now so i'm gonna get in wigwam i think just warm digits up and uh brew some uh brew some hot water and get uh get something to eat but uh, yay there you go last look I was filled with joy as I pitched the lanshan in the glow of the fading sun because I knew I'd already achieved my goal. The real battle isn't getting to the finish line. The real battle is getting to the start line. Stunning. Tea's on. Well, water's on. It new help kit, look. I've had to buy it because I forgot mine. No windshield. Just use bag as a windshield or whatever you've got. Um, stick the bag on its side and... It's happy days. I've got the outside closed. I leave the walking poles a little bit high. So I've got a uh, good clearance of maybe, I don't know, half a foot or whatever. Just so I can get some, a bit of breeze so I don't get too much condensation and don't have to deal with that. Obviously if it's really windy then I'll just drop it down but for now, I'm in this little valley and uh, everything's alright. Oh mate, I'm hungry. What are we going to have for tea? Minced beef hot pot. Adventure food's not the best, but it'll do for night one. There we go. Welcome to map time. I have bought all the big OS maps for the Lake District and I've plotted out the route. By going from the guidebook, I've transferred it all onto this <clears throat> bigger map because you get a lot more detail than you do in the guidebook because it's zoomed in more so I thought map time would be a lot better doing it by this so I wasn't able to do it at the end of every day I've had to remember everything as best I can and then here we go map time but I'm putting some effort in because look drawing it all on so welcome to map time Ambleside, so this is where I pulled up to Ambleside, I was a little bit late and I had to go into the centre of Ambleside to get myself a new pot to do to boil my water in, so I was a little bit late in setting off, maybe set off about 11, half 11. I parked in this car park here, you can pay, I think it's 30 quid and you can get a full week's parking ticket for that, so you can just leave your van or your car or whatever, your donkey, leave it there, you're good for a week. Off I went, down this path here, round, and I was so excited just to be setting off on a trail, man. And it is a lovely little uh, little place, Ambleside. I'm up here, over this cattle grid, and then we start our first sort of leg pumping climb up onto the tops through a couple of lovely gates, and some lovely views over Windermere. This is where I saw um, Joey D. Down this hill, it's just lovely, and it was lovely, I was treated to some beautiful weather as well. Come down here, it's easy walking, all the paths are pretty pretty well trodden in. It's a sharp turn here, you, don't, you come off the trail, so you, this would normally take this way, but you turn here and there was a wonderful gate here, and this was like, it had been a long time since I'd filmed the gate and put it on latch and locks, and this one was an absolute blinder, a return to form. I really enjoyed that one and that sort of set me up for day that 
such a good gate. I had a spring in my step. So here there's multiple choices to go here. You can go up and around, but I stuck by the side of Lufrig Tarn. Round here, onto the road. You join the road, but only for a couple of hundred metres, and then you back off it again and up. There's lots of trees and stuff round here. It was quite nice. And then you come through this caravan park. Down, there's a couple of ale houses here. And then you're uh, to this waterfall. You can make a little detour just off the track there. Check out the waterfall, which I did. This is all lovely track. It was pretty busy because it was a Sunday, but it's lovely walking. All the way along here to Ella Water. There are, there's a pub in Ella Water and places you can rest and eat. But I didn't do that. I carried on. There's a little bit of road work here. And then you're off up over the tops through some lovely woodland. It was so peaceful. Over this little road here, over this bridge, nice little gate on there. That's where we had that lock that was unfortunately not up to spec. <laughs> and again, through these woodlands, it was a lovely... There's nothing too high on this first day. We'll get into that later on in the hike, but just these woodlands and moorland. It was beautiful, especially through here with the sun shining through the trees. Um, and then we come up here, and this was the... Beatrix Potter House, the white cottage that we saw. Along this is just a bit of road, but it's no cars whatsoever, it's pretty quiet. Lovely views over the valley. We cross over the main road, and this is where we joined on to the Cumbria Way, which was lovely to be back on the Cumbria Way at a different time of year, so I could see all the the different foliage and how it looked in winter, it was pretty good. Through here, which is spectacular. Multiple choices here, you just stick to the side at lakes. Through here, it's quite busy, you get a lot of day walks and stuff, especially on a Sunday. Up here, towards this car park. You come over here, there's some lovely views to be had from the top of this road. You come down the road, now this is where I goofed. I've drawn it where I actually went on the map, but I was supposed to go through here and keep going on the Cumbria Way, which I wanted to do because there was some stuff that I wanted to see that I'd, uh, that I'd seen last time with Fern and wanted to see what it looked like in winter, but I goofed. So I was too busy chatting waffle to the camera, so I carried on down here, and it's just pretty much a road. It's not very busy, but by the time I'd got to about here, I'd realised, I was like, oh, no. Never mind, because if you if I zoom out, you can see this is where I was trying to get to, Coniston. So it was either go through that way or you just come down the road, which is what I did. And then there's a bridle way at the side of the road. You can follow that, boom, to the edge of Coniston Water. And then follow it. It's just that there's a, there's a decent track at the side of the road all the way in to Coniston itself, where I had to remain strong and not go for a gauge, which I did. That's that, on to the next map. So, with a heavy heart and a dry mouth, we avoided the pubs of Coniston and we cracked on up here. Bit of a leg pumper coming up here. And this was where I got sidetracked by that cave. Got a bit of a soggy trotter going in there. A couple of soggy trotters late on in day, which was a bit wounding, but never mind. We splodged on up here, and this is on road, this. Following down all quiet roads, till you get to here, which is a car park. And then I was off, chasing the sun, looking for a decent spot, but beautiful hiking. Started to get a little bit cold, we know this, because this is where I am now. And I believe, this was where the water, that little stream that I'm near, and I just came off, and that's where I'm parked up for at night. With some lovely views. Lovely views. Right, I think that's everything covered for map time. We're back, we're back, and we're paying attention to map time. And there you go. If you're not subscribed already, consider subscribing. And you can hit the bell notification if you want to be notified when part two's up. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.